candidates. Today we are going back to PowerPoint to conduct a decision making exercise in which I will give you a set of circumstances and you will need to determine what you would do as a leader in the situation. I can guarantee you that you will run into a similar situation at some point, whether it's in the training pipeline, in the fleet, or in civilian life. As you'll see here and beyond, you will frequently operate in the gray. That is, there will be circumstances in which an absolute right or wrong doesn't exist. Rather, responses to the circumstances will fall somewhere on a scale of quality as illustrated in this graphic. It is therefore incredibly important for you to exercise your decision-making muscle. There may come a time when the only difference between success and failure will be your estimation of the situation and the soundness of your decision-making process. With that said, let's take a look at our scenario. Now the following events are loosely based on reality, but I have made the graphics cartoonish so that we can focus on the general ideas. So this is you, you are the team leader. This is your team. Your team is made up of general population, small unit leaders, and a specialist. Your specialist is considered a leader because he serves a unique function on the team. This specialist is necessary because every one of your team members is assigned a lightning bolt. The lightning bolt is each team member's most essential piece of equipment. Without it, a team member is basically useless. Maintaining the serviceability and cleanliness of the lightning bolt is one of the team member's most basic and important functions. Failing in these functions is inexcusable. The specialist oversees lightning bolts on the team level. He maintains accountability of the team's lightning bolts and communicates with the warehouse for lightning bolt storage and maintenance. He also communicates directly with you and you with him. So if you need something done or have instruction to pass from your leadership concerning lightning bolts, you work with him directly. He is responsible at the team level for the team's lightning bolts to be in good order. One day, you get word from your leadership that the lightning bolts need to be deposited at the warehouse and you let your specialist know. Before they can be deposited, the team's lightning bolts must be thoroughly cleaned. This is standard operating procedure and it is understood that every team member is familiar with the procedure and importance of cleaning lightning bolts. You like your specialist because he is diligent and you know that his additional duties require a much greater time commitment and much more responsibility than the general population. You have a very good working relationship. You therefore have every reason to believe that depositing the lightning bolts will happen without issue. Your specialist tells the small unit leaders and together the team sets up a system where each small unit leader will inspect the cleanliness of his small unit's lightning bolts. This means that the specialist won't inspect each lightning bolt, entrusting that responsibility to the small unit leaders and ultimately to each team member. The time comes for the team to deposit the lightning bolts in the warehouse. You are not there because you are attending to another matter. The process seemingly goes without issue. What you don't know, however, is that another team leader, your rival, has been spot checking lightning bolts as they are being deposited. He notices that some of your team members are turning in dirty lightning bolts, inexcusably dirty, as if they hadn't been cleaned at all. Not all of your team members, but enough to establish a pattern and certainly more team members of yours than of any other team at the warehouse. He comes back and lets you have it. Not only do dirty lightning bolts make your team combat ineffective, which is cardinal sin number one, but this is a prime opportunity for him to tell you that your team is garbage, your standards are garbage, and you are garbage. He calls into question your basic ability to lead and your team's competence and ability to do the bare minimum. You are all unsatisfactory as far as he's concerned. As a result of this conversation, you are furious. Your team has failed the institution, has failed you in your absence, and has made you look really bad in front of your greatest competitor. You feel as though your specialist has failed you in particular 
since you entrusted him specifically to get this job done. With all of that in mind, we have three questions to ask, two for now and one for later. Who is responsible for the dirty lightning bolts and who is responsible for the lightning bolts making it to the warehouse in that condition? Who do you hold responsible? The team members who had the dirty lightning bolts, the small unit leaders, the specialist, the entire team, yourself? As you're formulating your answer, consider the following as well. Let's zoom out and look at a much bigger organization. And let's say that a group of people at the lower levels secretly engage in wrongdoing, which is later discovered. Whose responsibility are those actions? Is it the specific offenders, some leadership in between, or the leadership at the top? Also, who should answer for those actions to the authorities? Now let's go back to our scenario and ask the last and most important question. What could have been done to prevent not only the technical error of dirty lightning bolts being brought to the warehouse, but also the humiliation that followed within the organization? As you're considering these questions, let me give you some closing remarks. First, approach this type of exercise with humility. Everyone is a four-star general when they're reviewing circumstances from the safety of an armchair. It's a whole other thing to be in the thick of it with 20 different forces pulling you in 20 different directions. Second, this type of exercise is open-ended, meaning that even if there were an absolutely correct answer, the chances of reaching it in real time would be incredibly slim. If you have any lucid or otherwise pertinent thoughts, leave them in the comment section below. My only request is that you make them coherent and proofread before you post. If you like this video, please let me know and share it. I want to make decision-making exercises a series on my channel and would appreciate the feedback, whether it's supportive or critical. And finally, and as always, remember, it is not about you. Take care.